I'm Peter Block at ACC 17 in Washington, D.C., and with me is Peter Smits from Rotterdam. Uh, Peter and I have been talking about, and he has talked about, this issue of what to do with SC segment elevation myocardial infarction patients. Should we simply do the culprit lesion or, like so many registries and smaller studies have shown, move on at the same sitting and fix everything that is FFR positive? So Peter, tell me about this study, which finally is a randomized trial, which gives us the answer. Thank you, Peter. Well, the Compare Acute is a um, prospective randomized control trial um, looking in two strategies, the FFR guided complete vascularization um, versus infarct artery only uh, strategy. And um, uh, the primary endpoint was a composite of all cause deaths, recurrent MI, recurrent revascularization, and cerebrovascular event at 12 months. And it showed a highly significant superiority of the ever guided complete revascularization group versus the infarct artery only revascularization group. Okay, so there's the short answer, and Peter has already given you all the ins information, given me the information anyway. But let's drill down a little bit. You got rid of or did not include patients who had interventions in the non-complete revascularization group uh, within 45 days. Why did you do that? Well, we thought it was a fair comparison that if you compare two strategies that you take out those patients in, um, that need to be treated shortly after the infarct artery only group based on symptoms or proven ischemia. So if we didn't, um, if we didn't, didn't exclude those patients, then I think the, it wouldn't be a fair comparison between those two strategies. Okay, so that number one, so anybody with an ischemia producing lesion with positive stress test on day two after their infarct, it wasn't counted here. But after 45 days, if they came back with symptoms, they were indeed. So. Um, what are the outcome differences? Are they that significant? You just said, that yes, there was a major difference. What do you see in terms of differences? What we see that the, the composant endpoint was mainly driven by recurrent revascularizations. And these recurrent revascularizations were in one third of the cases were urgent. But they, more than 80% were clinically indicated. Um, so that was a major driver from the composant endpoint. What is also what also shown in our study is that we saw a, a doubling of myocardial infarction um, in the infarct artery only group, um, not reaching statistically significance, p value of 0.1, but it was in, yeah highly not um, numerically uh, better for the FFR guided um, full revascularization group. Okay, one last question, and we'll call it a day. So, are there patients? Uh, or in your practice, if you were an interventional cardiologist taking care of folks with infarcts, that you would not go ahead and FFR everything and see whether or not they should be done at the same setting? Yes, I think those, those patients certainly exist, and I think those patients that, um, left, for instance, left main disease patients, uh, I think they should be discussed in the heart team dis discussion. Um, also patients with a high syntax score, uh, patients with a CTO, those patients, I guess, are, not, um, um, are better off by having uh, doing it in the stage version. Okay, so for folks taking care of STEMIs out there, it's clear that FFR guided PCI at the same sitting is the right thing to do, but like always, there are always some patients and always a little bit of um, hemming and hawing about what the right thing to do is for some folks, uh, particularly those with severe disease and other arteries, where the heart team, in fact, can be helpful. Thank you, Peter. Welcome.